What's up guys, welcome to your 46 Android tutorial for the new boss in. What we're going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to tell you about the on check change method, but uh, first I wanted to make sure you guys got everything set up because I didn't realize, I forgot that uh, you guys probably want your variables the same as mine. So here's for my data class, set up some two buttons uh, for the start activity and then start for uh, result, the text view, or the edit text, text view. Then um, again, for the data class, you want to use the git layout, and then I, and I created this initialize method, which initialized all those variables, set the references, set the onclick listener to this, and then I just want to show you this as well because I, before I tell you guys to do the view dot onclick listener and do it that way, but also you can just type onclick listener. But if you hover over, you have two different classes where the onclick listener comes from. One's from the dialog interface you don't want that one you want it coming from the view package so just click on that one and uh, then again we just have to imp implement that so there we go we have our onclick method set up for the most part we'll get into that later but also the other thing I want you guys to change real quick is our send XML I forgot I wanted to add a, uh, a one button here so just drag and drop a button in there call let the text be return and then the ID is button return right there nothing too new you guys can again you know set that up however but I just wanted to show you guys how I set this up and then I go into uh, go into our open class and again this is how I set it up I had the two text view references question and test the button reference return data I had the layout set to send set up an initialized method again where I added those references and uh, just gonna set up that um, set on click listener real quick. And again, this class is gonna implement the view, the implement the on click listener. So there we go. We have the basic setup. Now what we want to do is basically reference this radio group. If we reference the radio group, we can get some information about which button was pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, a global variable. Whoops. It's the menu class. Don't worry about that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say um, within our initialized, or you guys, if you set up your variables here, just do it in the next line. Um, but what we're going to say is radio group that we can use within different methods so radio group and we're going to call this rg for radio group or we'll say selection list something like that make it a little bit uh, more descriptive so there we go we have a, a radio group set it up set up and then go within your initialize method or wherever you guys are using or whatever you guys are using for the most part we're going to say selected or selection list which is our, again a radio group we're gonna hit dot and we're gonna say set on and then it gives you pretty much the preference that it's gonna look for again we could do like on click listener but it's better to say on check checked change listener because um, anytime one of those radio buttons within this radio group is clicked it's gonna call this method uh, basically uh, the on check change listener as you guys can see here, you can see within its parameters, it takes a very or a variable type or object for the most part um, on check change listener. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement the on check change listener just like when we say set on click listener. It takes an on click thing within it. We can uh, implement two classes. So that's what I kind of wanted to show you guys. And again, we're just going to say this because we're going to implement it. So how you implement two classes is you just hit comma. Do and then do um, on checked change listener because again this is a class name that this set on check change listener is looking for. So all we got to do is hit hover over it and say import. And again we have two options. We want to import it from the radio group um, class. So select that one. And again we have to use the methods every time we implement something. So add unimplemented methods. Now, when you implement something again, you have to use the method within it, and when you extend something, you can use the method in it. But the thing is, you can only extend one class. So I couldn't do like you know, 
another class here or something. Um, you can, but you can implement more than one class, so that's nice. That's a, kind of a difference between implementing and extending as well. So basically, when we scroll down, this is for a button that we have that return button that we set up, and this is for a radio group. And at any time one of those radio buttons is selected, it's going to tell us what group it, it's from and also which basically the ID of which button was selected. So we're going to go within here because again it gives us kind of the information about the radio group that was pressed or something changed within it. And it's also going to tell us which button within that radio group was pressed. So what we're going to do is set up a switching case kind of like we do anytime we have multiple things going on. And it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is say pass, pass in the second argument called arg1 and this is going to give us pretty much the button that's pressed or the ID of the button. So now what our cases are going to be is just the IDs of those buttons. So we're going to say case then r.id. Um, r crazy what was our top answer? Error? Top one was crazy. And then we're going to just set this up for the most part. Copy and paste this twice because we had two buttons. And then change this from R crazy to R sexy and R both. Then Control Shift F for format. You can do that in Java as well. So again, it's giving us the ID of the button. And then if we're looking for this individual button, it's going to set that up. So there we go, we basically have our class set up for the most part. We'll break it down a little bit more in the next tutorial. Um, so I'll catch you guys then and hope you have a good day.